data. Actually, the first number with actual data will be plus one, the number that is being sent. There's a subtle reason for that. It has to do that with retransmission of SYN packets. Now, the uh, passive openness and the, the, the acknowledgement by the server, the granting of the request, that's called the, so the first packet is called commonly the SYN packet. The second one is the SYN act. Because it's a segment that has the SYN bit set and as well as the ACT bit set. And what is being acknowledged is the initial sequence number from the client. And so even though the pretty much here you see that the SYN packet, the active open, it doesn't contain data, yet there's something being acknowledged. See it? That is done uh, here. Uh, and the passive open then the reply contains then the initial sequence number that the server wants to use once it starts transmitting data. So once the client receives the, uh, the, uh, uh, the acknowledgement of the, uh, the second packet from the server, it then can, it acknowledges this sequence number, but then can already send data. So the third packet can already contain data. But that's the first one that can contain data. Payload, yeah? So that's the sequence. Yeah, there's the SYN, the SYN ACK, and then the acknowledgement of the data. So the SYN, if it has sequence number X, the acknowledgement is X plus 1 being sent. Yeah, acknowledge X plus 1. And if you look in the sequence number that will be sent is X plus 1. Yeah, so uh, when this client sends the sequence number 5, the first byte that is being transmitted, the sequence number containing the first byte of the payload, x plus 1. That's a little bit subtle. Uh, then the so sin, sin act, uh, and then the uh, acknowledgement. So this third packet uh, can have data. Well, uh, so that's how it looks like it in real life. It's just from some ca traffic capture. Uh, you see the first one has no payload. F stands for SYN bit set, then there's the first sequence number, second sequence number. It just happens to be randomly selected initial sequence numbers. Zero means there's no payload. That's the number of payload bits. Win 16384, that is the uh, window size that the client communicates to the server. This corresponds to the buffer that the client has available for data that the server transmits to it. And then when the server responds, the same thing, yet the same bit set is also the X flag set. It says then the window size of 8760. I have the MSS, MSS being the maximum segment size. 
and that is also, and I said, this is negotiated during uh, connection establishment. It's essentially an option that is sent in the SIN packets. Yeah? MSS 1460, both yeah, census, uh, is, uh, this matches then to an MTU of 1500. And then the acknowledgement that we have here. And that's how it works. Yeah? So that's what you observe. Now, uh, closing a connection is done uh, in it takes four packets. Actually, it takes uh, two times two packets. Uh, both sides of the connection, the client and the server, can be the first to terminate a connection. Uh, these, uh, they, because they're so independent, they're called half closes. So, and um, closing of a connection, half close, is initiated by sending a TCP segment where the fin, the finish flag is set. So whoever starts first is the active closer, whoever sends the second, the finish is the passive closer. So the response of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the active closer is initiated by one side, client or server, sending a packet with a fin bit set, which has to be acknowledged. If it's not acknowledged, it's being retransmitted, count as a regular packet. What this in this case is that when you're sending, when, when I'm sending a, uh, an, an, uh, and the active closer, that means I have no more data to send. But you're sending data to me, I still accept it. So that second part of the connection can remain open. And uh, at some other time, you know, Y sends that when it's done, when Y is sending, uh, done with it. Uh, 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 sending data, it's then sent to finish, sends another segment with the finish flag set, and which also has to be acknowledged. So, which kind of leads to this uh, type of interaction. Yeah, we have the server finishing here to the terminating the connection to the client. Then, you see the client here acknowledges the fin and then at some later time it, it uh, then so it does its own close. Which also has to be acknowledged. Now an interesting question here is, and that's, that's actually there's a heuristic here in TCP is when the active uh, when the passive the uh, uh, at this point here and the server being the active ultimate at this point here after this packet has been sent the server here has doesn't expect to do anything anymore. That is done. It has opened its data pipe to the other side. It has acknowledged the closing of the other direction, so it's essentially done. Yet, the, this part here, the passive closer has still has to leave the connection open for some time, actually considerable time. Uh, and it leaves it open because what may happen is that this acknowledgement may get lost. In which case, what would happen at the client here, the client not receiving an acknowledgement would retransmit the closing of the connection. But if there's nothing here anymore waiting, that will let that retransmission, will, that acknowledgement will never come. <coughs> So, which leaves then the this side here, the, uh, uh, the, the passive o the closer, as the uh, hanging for, for quite some time because it will retransmit according to the retransmission rules. So it will try a fair number of times, about ten times or so. So the rule here is that as the uh, active closer part here, if it has acknowledged the second pin from the from the passive closer, it has to leave the connection open for some time. So these are here, so the, 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 the connection of a TCP can be represented, at both the client and the server can be represented as a state transition diagram. These are the states, so there's quite some states yeah, to it. Uh, so from closed till established to closing, closed, uh, so these are all the, the, the state. Let me just show you the state transition diagram, how this works out. This on the left hand side is the client, 
on the right hand side is the server. So the state, uh, initially both both are in, in state, uh, both client and server are in state closed. The first thing that has to happen is that the server has to put itself into a listen mode. The server has to listen, yeah? Be ready to receive, it has to, you know, be ready to receive connection requests. Then the client, when it sends a SYN packet, it gets into the SYN send state. If it receives the acknowledgement request and it has sent it at, it is in the established state. The server side is in the established state when, once it receives the acknowledgement for the SYN act packet, yeah, the second packet. In the establishment phase, both sides exchange data yeah, in both directions. So that connection can go on for ever. If one side is done in this side here, the client side closes, the connection client closes it, yeah, and then they're going through the same way, the same way, close way, let's act down to the space. And, and on the, uh, here's this point, you see here, at this point, the, uh, this is the active closer here, uh, after sending this acknowledgement for the for the SIM packet here, uh, the client does not just terminate the connection, it remains in this time wait state. Because there may be a transmission uh, of this finished segment if the acknowledgement is not if this acknowledgement does not arrive, the uh, uh, passive closer here times out, retransmits it, and it's better if there's no way. So that's the state condition here. Uh, so this is the state diagram. The state diagram has, so this shows from close to established. The packet diagram goes from established to close. The red arrows are one side of the connection. The blue uh, arrows point to the other side. So what we have here is that we have the server side on the left portion, that's the blue part, and the uh, red uh, sections here, this is the, the client uh, part. Yeah? So the client sets itself into passive open. Then uh, the client goes from, by sending and send it, it goes from close to send send. Then, if in the state, if it receives the send act packet, now this is received from the server, yeah, in the listen state, the server. If it receives the SYN packet, it replies to the SYN act. Then, when the SYN act is received at the client, it sends an act itself, it's received. If that act is received, then the server gets into the establishment state. So, what's, what these little arrows here indicate are, uh, you know, things that, that can happen in the course of opening a connection, which are not this. this uh, so, what can happen is that both sides can can do it simultaneously. If, if, if you're sending an act and you're receiving an act at the same time, that is a, a will create an opening of connection. There's it's an RFT, that is the reset flag. If that's received, the server goes back to the uh, 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 listen state and so on. Yeah? Again, there's some, some things that can happen here. So the interesting part is actually the little black arrows here. These are all these, these circumstances that the DCP uh, state machine provisions for uh, that before a connection is actually closed, it can finish it. And so the server is allowed to terminate a connection uh, that it has. And this it may send possibly if it does never receives the soon enough. If it never receives the the, uh, I can never receive the act for the, the never receive the, the packet the attempt that it made to terminate the connection. So that's the uh, opening. The closing has these two different pieces. This is the passive closer. This is the active uh, closer. This is the one who, who does this uh, uh, close first. Uh, so the active opener, you have this closing the connection, waiting for an act, and then waiting for the other side to, to act. So for the uh, passive closer, the state diagram is uh, different. If it receives the first act from the active closer, it goes into close wait. And then 
uh, once it's done with this data transmission, it just tends to finish that. If it receives the acknowledgement of that, it, it terminates. Right? Whereas, whereas here, the client goes to uh, the state here where it has to, in the end, wait, even if it has received this app, yeah, which is this part here, it has to wait for a longer timeout to uh, uh, close the connection, yeah, which is exactly this, this piece here, yeah, so what that I mentioned earlier. But this part is done with everything. It's not expecting to receive any pack packet. It's not expecting to send any packet. Yet it has to wait, just in case that this last acknowledgement is not received. Uh, and in this case here, uh, 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 when it will be reached. So. Yeah, so that's pretty much the case. Right? So long, how long does it wait? That's kind of interesting. This waiting time is actually pretty long. Yeah? So it's the MSL, it's called the maximum segment lifetime. So it's just some, some guess now. Yes, question. Uh, so you mentioned that it needs to wait for some time just in case the acknowledgement gets lost, right? Yes. What if it, like, what if it, like, uh, the server goes down or the client goes down? In that case, uh, will it just retransmit a bunch of times? Yeah, well, if things go down, then you've got to do what you've got to do, yeah? Then, then, then if that, you know, what happens then is, let's suppose this part here just breaks. <coughs> what will happen then here is that you'll have just many retransmissions. And then so eventually, eventually, uh, here at this side here, the server will just give up. But that's regular procedure. But it will take some time. There will be many retransmission attempts. Yeah, you don't want to have that as regular behavior. That's the whole point. Um, that's why it's terminated. Yeah, if it would, if you would just terminate here, yeah, then you would leave. You know, things go bad with this packet. Yeah, with this acknowledgement here. Uh, then you would um, be, you know, you would just this guy here to retransmit packets. Then nobody, you know, this would be the same as like a failure, and you would just would retransmit and retransmit n number of times before you decide this up. It just slows down the closing. That's the only. There's not so much to it, but you know, there are some. There's some thought that went into this design, and uh, again, it kind of gets, it gets more interesting the longer you study it. So if you're at this level here, I just point to some of the uh, interesting pieces here. This is one of them. And so the, what is interesting is that this maximum segment lifetime is set to something ridiculously long. Yeah, maximum segment lifetime. How long do you have to wait? Well, how long? Can a packet be in transition? How long do you wait for? How long can that take to get a retransmission? Well, they said it to something between 30 seconds and two minutes, and that's something that you explore later in the lab to find out what the number is going to be. Uh, what else is interesting? Resetting your connection. Yeah, at any point, pretty much, TCP connection can just be a reset. You hit Control C. Yeah, if you're doing a telnet section, you hit Control C. You'll see that will get a packet out with the reset flag set, and that terminates the connection then immediately. And I think from any of these states, one can have an arrow to the reset state. That's it on the connection uh, management. Yeah, it's semi exciting. Let's talk about this part here. TCP provides all these services. IP doesn't do a lot. You have to set stuff. Just set a TCP does a lot. It makes sure that sender and receiver are the, that their rate is being set, 
if something goes wrong, packets get lost, TCP retransmits, and if the network is too crowded, if it's congested, then TCP adjusts the sender to send less. So these are essentially three algorithms, and you've heard about these algorithms in your first networking class. Flow control, error control, congestion control, maybe not congestion control, but flow control and error control you've heard about. Uh, flow control is sliding window, yeah? Or you use, what's the simpler one where you can only send one packet? Stop and go, stop and wait, yeah? Or ABP, alternating bit protocol. Uh, so, um, a TCP essentially uses sliding window. Then, for error control, you have heard about algorithms like, what was it? ABP, that's an error control protocol, with a single packet. You have go back N, you have selective, selective repeat. repeat. Are there any others? That's pretty nice, not so much. Yes. They're proactive algorithms where you use overcoat. They have forward error correction. <coughs> Forward error correction <coughs> is if you add redundancy to your data and then you only need to get, so you, if you have say, an amount of data, n blocks, you set n plus k, and if you drop k up to k, okay, if you receive out of this n plus k that I'm sending to you, if you receive any n, any, you can reconstruct the original n packets. That's forward error correction. Uh, that is used a lot in data transmission. Uh, TCP doesn't do it. Yeah, what can I say? At the application layer, it makes sort of sense. Uh, so, um, there are these algorithms. Yeah, sliding window, go back and, and there's congestion control by which the Mac, by which the net feeds. TCP connects and realizes the network is too full. They have to send less. But how much less? And how fast, how can you start up again? So these are all three different algorithms. Now, in TCP, all of these algorithms are realized in a single block of code. Single block of code response. So everything is somewhat coupled. In the sense, so again, flow control is the, is the algorithms that essentially do speed matching between the sender and the receiver the receiver telling the sender how much data it can send. And that's the window size. That's essentially the window size. Error control is recovery or concealment, the TCP's recovery of lost data. And that is done by acknowledgments. It's done by uh, timers. Uh, and congestion control, that is the uh, kind of preventing that the network becomes overloaded. That is also rolled into this. Kind of interesting because in TCP, TCP believes that a lost packet is due to congestion. Not always, but generally it believes that. In particular, whenever there's a timeout, it believes that timeout is because of a lost packet and that lost <coughs> packet is uh, because of congestion. We say we believe, because TCP does not know anything about the network. If you're running TCP on the same host, or you're running it on the same, uh, around the globe, client and server, the TCP code is the same code. So TCP has to do a lot to adapt to these changes in the, these, these, these uh, changes in the, in the, in the uh, delay between client and server. Can be a few microseconds, can be just propagation delay at uh, 200 uh, milliseconds. So, uh, TCP kind of combines these elements. So what I want to do first is talk about how uh, acknowledgements are being sent in TCP. So this first. Yeah, so this, uh, the, this is the 361 slide, very high level. So TCP acknowledges uh, data. So if you're sending data from A to B, B acknowledges the data. Now what can be done is that B can acknowledge the data by attaching it to the data packet. That's called piggybacking. 
Yeah, so the idea of piggybacking, the objective there is to reduce the number of acknowledgement traffic. Uh, you can see here Where that the piggybacking is, you know, how is this done? Well, oh, you just set the X flag, flag. that's all. Add the TCP header with the X flag set. That's an acknowledgement. So if I send data in direction, I set the X flag and I put in the sequence number that I want to acknowledge in the, in the X number field. That's it. Yeah, that's an acknowledgement. So it's you know, <coughs> conceptually very fancy, the implementation was pretty straightforward. So the X information, we know it is in the TCP header. And <coughs> acknowledgements play a role for flow control, error control, <coughs> and congestion control. So pretty much everything is done by interpreting, not knowing. The TCP receiver doesn't know a lot. It just interprets and interprets the information to make uh, a guess. A guess about uh, error control and congestion. All right. So there's the acknowledgement here and we sent it out of time. So the, uh, what we know is uh, that packets TCP segments have sequence numbers. Sequence numbers are the sequence number of the first byte of the payload. Yeah, so after the TCP header, this payload first byte has a number. That number is the sequence number. Now, uh, TCP uh, uh, sequence numbers are associated with bytes. Now the sequence number for the first byte is written in the sequence number field. The sequence numbers are 32 bit long and they're wrapped once it goes around. It's no big deal. Uh, and the first sequence number that is used is just randomly selected when opening a connection and it's, you know, sent in the, uh, uh, so that's that. Let's look at the acknowledgement. Yeah, the acknowledgement, the role is it confirms successful delivery of data. When a sender wants to acknowledge data, it sends a TCP header, maybe with payload in it, that has the X flag set and the acknowledgement number is then the sequence number that is being acknowledged. What is important is what is being acknowledged is the data that has a smaller sequence number than what is given in the X number. So you acknowledge it is sending an X number equal to 5, it confirms delivery for everything that has not previously been acknowledged up to but not including five. That's important. Yes. So one way to think about it is the acknowledgement number says this is the byte that the receiver wants to see next. The expected number. Next, I want to see five. That's my next number. Which is also then good for go back and if you're using go back and because then if you have if you're receiving this number you have to retransmit well, I know the receiver expects five, so that's where I start. Uh, that's what this comes in. <coughs> All right, so uh, TCP allows cumulative acknowledgement. What that means is if you're sending multiple packets, yeah, you don't have to acknowledge each packet. In this case here, we have the A sending data to B. We have sequence number 0 with 10 bytes, containing which sequence number? Right? 0 till 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9, the number you've got to calculate. You've got to calculate it from the uh, TCP, uh, from the IP header and the uh, uh, IP header and the TCP header. You have to know what the uh, sequence number you may acknowledge, you have this one is acknowledged, sequence number here uh, comes in uh, being acknowledged, then the third segment is sent, no acknowledgement here, uh, then fourth segment arrives being acknowledged. At this point, acknowledgement 40 means this is an acknowledgement, four bytes numbered from where to where. What's the smallest? This X40, what is the smallest byte that it acknowledges? What's the largest? What sequence of bytes are being acknowledged? Really? 
Yeah. Zero, 39? Mm, no, because uh, uh, zero has already been acknowledged. Once it's acknowledged, you know, it's only the unacknowledged file. What is being acknowledged? Mm -hmm. Hmm? 20 to 39. Now you're looking at, at 40, what is being acknowledged? 20 to 39. Yeah, so got have to, you have to get used a little bit to what TCP does. Yeah, you're looking at 40, say, no, oh, it's 40, yes, zero to 40. No, it's, you have to look at the previous acknowledgement. Uh, so in fact, it's, yeah, uh, you know, you don't go back all the way around because um, <coughs> uh, you're wrapping the sequence number space. And what is, you know, you don't always start with zero. If you don't remember what the initial sequence number is, <coughs> you remember what has already been acknowledged. Yeah, they said, and that is essentially the sliding window in the end. What if you receive like uh, um, ARC 40 first and then ARC 20? You just ignore <coughs> ARC 20? Uh, uh, yeah, so if you're receiving an uh, ARC 40, you're acknowledging that. The, we will see this when we do the sliding window. Once the window is moved, um, that will just be ignored. So the sliding window takes care of the fact that uh, it's not large enough so that. Uh, Act 20 is the wraparound version of the... Uh, yeah, the, the sliding window is essentially memorizing the points. Yeah. Yeah. The sliding window has the smallest and the largest number. That's the level of interest. We'll find <coughs> that in TCP, there are actually three or four values that, that, that are being kept. There's the advertised window and the open window, so there's a third number in there that, that is relevant. Uh, but, you know, it pretty much tells you what numbers you have to care about. Uh, so here, you see this here. So the rule is now what is when. So you cumulative means you don't have to acknowledge with everything. If you're sending a data, it receives, you send all unacknowledged data is being uh, 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 acknowledged. Now, when do you send it? Yeah, that's the thing. Do you, yeah, why not wait forever? Yeah. Well, if you wait too long, you trigger timeouts. But how do you know that? Yeah. So it turns out that that TCP has two simple rules that deal uh, uh, there are two simple rules that uh, TCP uses to govern the that trigger the transmission of acknowledgement. There is the delayed acknowledgement and there's Nagel's rule. So essentially TCP would acknowledge each segment. These two rules tell overwrite this. Yeah. Uh, you have to know that there's a delayed acknowledgement, uh, and uh, what it means is that the transmission of an acknowledgement can be delayed, but not for more than 200 milliseconds. But you end the thing is you delay acknowledgement, but if another packet arrives, you send the acknowledgement. Yeah, so what you have in TCP, the normal behavior would be that you're getting a packet, you're having a delayed acknowledgement, but the next packet then cancels this. So you then get an acknowledgement for the next packet. So you don't yeah, you delay acknowledgement, and you would wait up to the maximum delay, which is a time, 200 milliseconds. Normally, you'll measure it in the in the lab this week. Uh, but if, um, uh, if if the second packet arrives, then you send the acknowledgement. So something like this does not happen in TCP. Yeah, you would send the acknowledgement for the second segment, which means that on the average, if you're looking at TCP packets and acknowledgement. You see, in a regular connection, you see twice as many data packets as acknowledgements, or have as many acknowledgements. You see every other data packet uh, being acknowledged. Yeah, just that's what governs it. Yes. So the acknowledge meant for the uh, packet that just arrived, or the previous packet that was delayed? Uh, you would acknowledge in this part here, the acknowledgement is delayed. So you see, the what you would acknowledge at 40 would then acknowledge this one as well as this oh, one. Okay. Yeah. So you don't try to, yes, you know, the, the point, I didn't see the question first. Uh, so you don't try to set your, you try to be timely. 
Uh, so you mentioned that, uh, um, so in, in that case, uh, there will be only two packet modes to be active, is that uh, okay? That's right, that's the regular behavior, regular behavior. Uh, if things go bad, uh, for example, uh, you sent me 10 packets, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I don't get 6, or I, get, I don't get the second packet, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I don't get 2. What I would do is I would always acknowledge the first packet. Then I get number two, then I acknowledge all ten packets. Okay. Or after after one and two through ten. So it is possible that you acknowledge multiple packets, but in regular behavior if nothing gets lost, every other one. Okay. That's where the you see this is where the error control gets rolled into the acknowledgement. It's all rolled into one, but mentally you can separate it out. And the way I present it, it's a little bit separated out. So it can make sense out of it. Yeah. Is that what you mentioned, the selective acknowledgement? Selective acknowledgement is pretty much orthogonal to this. This is something that uh, is... Selective acknowledgement is communicated in headers of... in options of the TCP header. So I mean, if it doesn't get two, it would retransmit two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Okay. So, but in if you're doing selective acknowledgement, the acknowledgement scheme becomes really complex. TCP has since recently, and by recently I mean uh, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and it was new, yeah. Uh, but it's not used really, so I'm not really talking about it much. But when if you're looking at your, there is an old negotiating negotiation of, or try to look for it in the lab, yeah, if you see it. Uh, you would see it in the header. Yeah, and, and Wireshark will parse it nicely for you and present it to you. But what you will always see is that when the connection is established, there's an option where both sides agree that they can do it. Yeah, that is something that has to be done uh, in the uh, in the uh, SIM packet. Uh, okay, delayed acknowledgement. The second one <coughs> is Nagel's rule. Nagel's rule is pretty much uh, the the idea behind that is that if, you know, it's pretty much intended if you're doing a remote terminal application, like Secure Shell and Telnet. What Telnet, no, Telnet normally does, it uh, sends one packet per letter type. Type your name, that many packets. So, now if it takes a long time for an acknowledgement to come back, Let's say if the, it takes if the time for an acknowledgement to come back, if that is longer than my type to type the second character, then I shouldn't really send a packet for each character. I should wait until that act comes back and send multiple characters at one time. So that is Nagel's rule. That was a guy called Nagel at Carnegie Mellon, you know, but this is 70s, yeah. Uh, uh, pretty much a rule where you should not send too many small segments. And small segment means a segment that has a one byte payload, essentially one character. Uh, and so there is a rule that prevents this. So let's discuss this in, in, in detail. So uh, the way you observe delayed acknowledgement, that's you know this is what you're doing this way, yeah. Uh, what you're having is you have a, a, a server and a client now and then you're typing a character so if you're thinking about a telnet application you have to really think about how it works <coughs> telnet is remote terminal they are secure shell very similar it's just telnet not secure uh, you type a character that's number one the character is sent the server, the TCP server, takes the character, passes it on to the TC to the Telnet server application. It looks at the character, interprets it, and then normally, if you're sitting at the computer, it will just display it on the screen. What Telnet does, it sends this character back. And so if you're typing a character, there are actually two characters being sent the character that you type, then what is being interpreted, this is sent back, 
and then it's shown on your screen. So when I say you're typing a character, you see three packets, you would expect three packets. Actually, how many packets would we expect? We would expect that we send the character, we get an acknowledgement. Then the server sends <coughs> the acknowledgement back, which is acknowledged. Two characters in each direction, both are being acknowledged. We would see, expect four packets. Yeah? So, uh, in fact, what you're seeing is, uh, well, you see, in most cases, you see three characters. So here, this is the scenario. Uh, Argon and Neon, you know, I type three characters, bum bum bum. Each character has what is each type character results in three packets being transmitted. The first one, uh, yeah, it's maybe from the previous one. Uh, push sequence number one to two, act number one, and no data is not. Yeah, I sent the packet, Neon acknowledges the data and sends, it and sends the echo character back. What is interesting about here is, that, and this is where you see the delayed acknowledgement, the echo character that Neon sends back to Argon. So I sent the character, it's typed on Argon, it's sent to Neon. Neon echoes the character back. But the acknowledgement for the par character sent by Argon could have said, been said earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can do it if you're just thinking about layer rank. When at the end of number one, when the character arrives, that's where you would send the acknowledgement. Then the data is passed to the telnet server, it's interpreted and being sent back. That's when the acknowledgement is being sent. Yeah? So this is pretty much the delayed acknowledgement kicking in. You're waiting until you have data. You're holding, the, you're delaying the acknowledgement, making a bet that there's data in the reverse direction to increase opportunities for piggybacking. And that's what's taking place. Yeah. Yeah. So what you would normally expect is send the character, get the acknowledgement, then the echo of the character is sent as a third packet and, and uh, then which is not being acknowledged, but what we actually see is this one here. Characters send act an echo. So what's happening here, this part here, uh, the server, Neon, is holding on with the acknowledgement. But then the server has its own data. That was the gamble. The delay pays off. I'm sending a packet out. I save one packet, then save 40 bucks. What is the client piggyback The client here has a delayed act also. Uh, it needs the, uh, the, the client does not, well, uh, let's see. Why does not the client not piggyback? Because not fast enough. Uh, it would have um, an ad come in. It has, once the packet comes in, it doesn't have data ready. Oh. Yeah. You can try it in the lab. Okay. If you can type faster, yeah. then it takes the acknowledgement to come back. Okay. You will see that that is being piggyback. Okay. That to be really fast. So it, it should be faster enough to okay. within the time frame of the of the delay acknowledgement, right? No, it's actually, uh, I'm talking about the piggyback. The delayed acknowledgement takes in. You will see it, yeah? So if you're looking here, the third packet, there is delayed up. Uh, like this one here, very fast, very fast, long, long time. Look at here. So the first two packets are being sent quickly because just sending the packet, the server does it since sends the par character back. So the delayed acknowledgement is just canceled pretty early. But the third packet here, you see here, goes from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. It goes from 9.4 to 9.8. Maybe there is a packet. That's actually not that long. And here it's uh, 11. Here it waits for 70 milliseconds. Yeah? Uh, and maybe that is, it's not 
the maximum length because there are other events taking place, there are already other packets coming in. So for the third packet, you see the delayed act. Now, that delayed act, if you have data in the other direction, <coughs> there, send packet back, then it would send it, if you can do it kind of close enough, if you and you can do it by, uh, if you just <coughs> increase the propagation delay. Uh -huh. I don't even know what the experiment is, because that's... So this was due to the delayed acknowledgement, uh, uh, yeah, more delayed. 20, so, so 200 uh, Delayed X, well, let me explain all. Yeah, so the maximum time is typically 200 milliseconds, that's the maximum waiting time. You never delay more than 200 milliseconds. Now, the exceptions are this. An acknowledgement <coughs> should, not must, should be sent for every second for every second. That's important. The exception to the delayed acknowledgement rule explains to you why you see half as many acknowledgements as data packets. You really have to see it. <coughs> what can I say? That's how it is. Uh, and when packets arrive out of order, there's no delay. Yeah, out of order means out of yeah, that indicates that something is wrong. So then you're trying to send information back to the receiver any longer because once things are out of order, that may result in retransmissions. Yeah, and so then this is you can imagine all this stuff in the TCP code. Yeah, it's not just single send, receive packet, powers, look up, send out. Yeah, there's more stuff going on. A lot of state information being kept. <coughs> timers taking timers in the protocol quite for contentious. Yeah? Um, so, excuse me. Uh, let's excuse see. me. Yeah. So kind of here's the phenomenon that you then get. In. So you this is what you see. Essentially, an acknowledgement for every second segment. Except if no data arrives, then you wait the maximum time to send data out. So this is the uh, So this is something, except the, you know, if I give you this, just the blue and the red stuff in an exam, and I give you this maximum time, I ask you which acknowledgements put in the acknowledgement that TCP sends. Send, send at which time for how many data packets. You can put in the red arrows. All right. Uh, yeah, briefly about Nagel's rules. Nagel rule is this, yeah? So we have this rule. Do not send more than one Packet with the one by payload. That means I must miss, must get an act. Yeah, so you get your window size is large, but the data comes in small chunks. Don't send, you know, for each time you hit a character, send the packet. Yeah, just instead for small packets and only for one byte packet. For two byte packets, you send two packets. That's all. So it's essentially an optimization only for these, these remote terminal type applications. Yeah, but, you know, Back then, the bandwidth that you have on your cell phone, on your data plan, was the capacity was available on the continental backplane. Yeah. 1990, had a backplane, the backbone of the internet was running at 1.5 megabit per second. Yeah. What's your data plan? You see 3 megabit. <laughs> But you're still running TCP, yeah? So, here you go. It's <laughs> uh, time to overhaul this. Yeah, let's, not let's see, uh, I'm running late. I don't want to run over, over run. I don't want to start this. So I'll continue this very briefly about the Nagel's rule tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow I'll restart about sliding window and all this fun stuff. Uh, the sliding window stuff is always an exam type question. So